And Daniel, you were saying that something's about to happen here. Uh, bring us to that moment yeah. if you can. Yeah, we're about uh, 15 seconds or so away, judging from the uh, countdown or count up clock at this point, from seeing that large external fuel tank, which was filled with the supercooled liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, uh, providing the fuel uh, to the launch. It will uh, begin to slowly separate away uh, from the belly of uh, shuttle Atlantis. Uh, we should be seeing that in just a few seconds uh, as the shuttle reaches that point of getting up into orbit. And the uh, main engine cutoff we're hearing has been confirmed. Let's listen in. Getting some fuzzy pictures there. Um, the, as I say, that uh, external fuel tank should there be falling away any second now. Yep. There it goes. It's an amazing DT picture to see this uh, camera here. Atlantis now uh, off of the external tank. Uh, Commander uh, Brent Jett will fire the uh, Pulse engines on Atlantis to position it for uh, photography of the tank as it falls away. Beautiful view of Atlantis as it uh, falls away from the tank. You can see the jets firing uh, those reaction control system jets to position the orbiter. Atlantis Houston, nominal Miko, Ohms 1 is not required, and no action on the cabin DPDT. Miles, when they were talking about that camera getting a shot of the uh, orbiter, of uh, Commander Jet positioning the orbiter to get a picture, that's a camera that's actually on the external fuel tank that they're trying to line up with the orbiter to check for any debris that may have hit. Yeah, there's also, there's a series of fixed cameras. There's also the crew, there's a person assigned on the crew with a handheld camera actually to get some pictures of that external fuel tank before they become too far from each other. And that will give them a lot of confidence about any foam loss, which of course would take us back to Columbia and the issues surrounding that, uh, the loss of Columbia. Of course, it was a big piece of foam falling off that fuel tank, which caused that fatal breach Firing in Columbia's heat shield. And just to clarify, that Sounds flash evaporator system, system, just to put that to rest, which yeah. turned out to be nothing. Yeah. Uh, but what happened was it, it basically Nine, sends, uh, it's part of the cooling system. It's very critical for those auxiliary power units to stay cool because of the hydrazine that which, which uh, powers them. And that's why they were concerned about them overheating and there was the possibility that if that flash evaporator system wasn't working properly, they might have to shut down one of those. And that was the option I believe they were talking about. Eventually they decided that it w whatever happened, whether it was a piece of ice or whatever was uh, giving problems to that flash evaporator system was not a real issue. So, But Miles, you, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. The flash evaporator, if, say, there is something wrong with it, would that be a problem when the shuttle does decide to return? Well, it's something that, yes, because it's something that is used during launch and landing. In space, they have radiators which are kind of inside the, the doors of the payload base. The flash evaporator is critical during those periods. It's something they will look at if they determine it was, for whatever reason, uh, some, uh, a piece of ice that clogged things up. I suspect that probably will not change the way they come in. Maybe it'll change uh, the way they thermally heat the, the orbiter before it uh, comes in for re-entry. There's some possibilities there, but I suspect in the grand scheme this will just be a little, a little glitch that they will look back on. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. All right. Daniel, Miles, if, thanks, uh, gentlemen, for bringing us up to date on all of this. We'll be checking back if necessary. It certainly has been, from all uh, indications, a uh, successful launch, right? By all accounts, uh, it certainly seems that way. Uh, some uh, smiling faces in the uh, firing room here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, a lot of people uh, with some smiles on their faces after a couple of weeks of a lot of frowns, a lot of people dealing with some pretty big issues. Uh, uh, Miles, I want to thank you uh, for, for joining us. Uh, I know it's your day off, but uh, thanks for providing all your, your expertise for the last uh, half hour or so. My pleasure. Yeah, I'd say Miles O'Brien right, knows a little bit about this, doesn't he? <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, he's just our guru here, our space guru. Thanks All right, gentlemen, we'll be checking in with you. Um, but do you want to talk about uh, something new that has surfaced? A new date surfacing.